WFLA now will begin momentarily. WFLA now will begin momentarily. Live from WFLA Studios, top stories, breaking news, interactive coverage in the palm of your hand. This is Stream Center Live. Here's J.D. Buno. An afternoon search here at Cheatham Dam so far unsuccessful as law enforcement volunteers and the Cajun Navy continue to canvas Nashville and beyond for Riley Strain, the missing 22-year-old Missouri student last seen more than a week ago on a Friday night in downtown Nashville. We're here to provide updates, the very latest that we're getting in across our website and applications with our next our sister stations as well. Welcome into the Stream Center, folks. JB here with you live now across multiple uh, platforms. Hello to our YouTube live audience that is continuing to file in here. This is the most recent video that we have uh, from the Cheatham Dam. This is about an hour northwest of Nashville up the Cumberland River where, of course, the search for Riley Strain has shifted, as, of course, you've seen over the uh, really several reports that have come out over the course of today, WKRN.com reporting this morning that the sheriff's office uh, was going to be paying attention to uh, the Cheatham Dam with a basic shutdown that would occur. And we've been monitoring the reports there coming out from various reporters that the water level had lowered enough for there to be a more comprehensive search uh, near the lock and dam uh, to canvas for any sign of Riley Strain, the missing 22-year-old Missouri student who disappeared on March 8th in downtown Nashville. You can see there a lot of floating debris at the base of that dam uh, on the surface of the water. Uh, no sign of Riley just yet, and the search effort continues elsewhere on the river itself all the way through to downtown Nashville, uh, including uh, included in that search is also the Cajun Navy. And we have video here to show you of the Cajun Navy search effort. And so this is coming from WKRN.com. You can clearly see that they are in downtown Nashville when this video begins and they are looking anywhere that they can, or really looking across the surface of the water for any signs of Riley. Now, News Nation correspondent Evan Lambert reporting that there's going to be a search effort that continues tonight using lights, and sonar to look what's beneath the surface of the water to find any sign of Riley's strain. Uh, This is a story now um, uh, that we, of course, have been monitoring very, very closely, but it's been now uh, 12 days uh, since Riley uh, was last seen, causing, of course, extreme concern uh, with his family, uh, his friends, and more information continues to come out uh, even in the uh, most recent Uh, 24 hours, Uh, a family press conference that was held yesterday revealed that uh, Riley Strain, uh, his phone went off when there was still plenty of battery power remaining. Okay, so that is a key piece of information because that tells us that the phone was either manually put into off, it was manually turned off, or it was forced off by perhaps something uh, as simple as being submerged underwater. Of course, with the search efforts being focused so much on the river itself and Riley's last known whereabouts being in close proximity of the river, his bank card, of course, being found near the river, the river has really been the starting point for the search for Riley Strain. Uh, But 
uh, the, the digital trail of breadcrumbs and really the physical evidence as well in that trail of breadcrumbs really goes cold by the river with no sign of Riley uh, after, of course, uh, the timestamps end on that Friday night uh, in downtown Nashville. Uh, the search efforts have been exhaustive. Uh, they continue, of course, to, to look here today. And uh, concern has uh, perhaps never been higher, of course, because we have no sign of, of Riley uh, since really that one piece of police body camera video that captured a very innocent exchange uh, between an officer that was on duty and Riley uh, that, that had walked by that officer's location in downtown Nashville. Again, Riley uh, going in the opposite direction of his hotel um, and not in the direction of his hotel, which of course creates concern because there has been video of him uh, stumbling uh, through Nashville, uh, clearly uh, after uh, having quite a lot to drink uh, with his fraternity brothers on a trip uh, to Nashville from the University of Missouri. Uh, this is a this is an extremely concerning story, and and uh, no one is is more panicked over the situation, of course, than Riley Strain's family, and they are hoping to have answers at some point. Uh, but right now, given everything that has transpired, this remains a mystery. Riley Strain completely vanished, and so often do we talk about stories with missing people where the phone is the missing piece, the missing key, and knowing that the phone was turned off with battery power uh, tells us a whole lot uh, about the fact that um, that something will look something very something might have happened uh, in regards to the river and it's just kind of all adding up to a very very grim picture here so I'll do my very best to answer questions here out of our comment section um, there you can see Nissan Stadium that's the home of the Titans these people kind of a bit of a locator as to where we are now on the trip with the Cajun Navy we'll keep this up here on the screen uh, shout out to all the, the the reporters that have been working this the law enforcement teams the search crews the Cajun Navy this has been this has really consumed Nashville over these last a couple of weeks as Riley Strain is not just a local news story there it is a national news story where people are paying attention to this really coast to coast and, and across the country uh, including us here from the stream center in Tampa so yeah, there you can see members of the Cajun Navy. They are participating and they are going to be continuing the search efforts tonight um, using any lights that they can. People, you know, some people on, on Twitter were, were noting, you know, checking un underneath some of these structures, you know, getting divers in the water too. Um, how often are we talking about a story with a, with a water component, right? Where being able to get into the water and use underwater detection equipment is so paramount to to a search effort and so we know that the search will continue tonight and hopefully uh, there are some additional clues that tell us one once and for all what happened uh, to riley strain so let's go to the comment section uh, because we have an audience in the thousands let's just focus on hashtag AJB comments as we do that basically if you use hashtag AJB with your comment that indicates to you uh, excuse me that indicates from you to us that I'd like your comment to be spotlighted on screen I'll do my very best to get to as many of those comments um, as possible uh, you can also use um, hejb.live that's another way that you can get your comment uh, directly into the stream center and it doesn't scroll up on my screen it kind of stays in a queue there so if you're looking for uh, a, a way to really get my attention you can go over to hejb.live and submit a, a comment there all right so let's see let's see <laughs> excuse me what people are saying here Um, Neil asks, why aren't they draining the river to help locate Riley? Uh, the river is massive. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll try we'll, yeah, a little Wikipedia looking up. Um, Cumberland River is absolutely massive. Draining it is, is not a realistic proposition. Um, now, uh, allowing the water to be lowered at the dam, um, that's probably more feasible, but... Um, 
lowering the water to a reasonable amount. It, it, I mean, it's 688 miles of water. And it drains at 18,000 square miles. I, I don't think, I'm not entirely sure, but I, I just don't think that it's a realistic proposition. The dam, of course, is, is so integral to, to water flow with the Cumberland River as it goes into the lake northwest of, of Nashville, but let's see, we got Cubby here um, on HJB.live. Is it possible that he went down to the went down the bank, that he kept walking along the bank? Maybe that's why there is no camera footage. Um, at some point, look, there, there's clearly a digital trail of, of breadcrumbs, right? Where there's different moments in time, time stamped, where we know where Riley was as he was heading north away from the bar, Luke Bryan's bar, uh, a common place for, for college students to go and, and have a good time. As he was going away from his hotel, as he was going away from the bar, um, up Gay Street, we we there's been a lot of great uh, maps that have been put together on, on social media. People putting together timestamps and illustrating actually where he was at those particular times in the night after he was uh, after he was removed and 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 told to leave the bar. Um, but yeah, at some point things go dark, and, and really that ca that ca body camera video with the officer uh, being really our, our last clue that's where things go dark so is it possible that that's why there's no camera footage walking along the riverbank yeah i mean absolutely um they're not <laughs> cities don't have cameras everywhere it's very commonplace for for cameras to be in well-known locations uh, particularly intersections and commonly known areas common areas if you will but um they can't have camera surveillance, video surveillance over the entire city. So it's only natural for the trail to go cold. And it did go cold near the river. Lori asking about a press conference. Look. Law enforcement agencies have different strategies when it comes to press conferences. Some law enforcement agencies will call a press conference and do it just to uh, appease the public or to satisfy the demand for information that exists. Even if they can't release a whole lot of information, a press conference will be called and they'll do their very best to be transparent and honest and, and open with the media. For, for, for Metro Police in, in Nashville, and I'll bring up, I want to see when their most recent um, tweet was for Metro Nashville Police they their most recent <coughs> excuse me tweet was 17 hours ago and it was about Riley Strain it was helicopter video and their strategy has been in large part to allow uh, their Twitter page to do the communication it, it's, it has been perhaps unorthodox to many out there given that we haven't really had that police press conference there's been some availability here and there of course but um certain stories when they reach a certain level of attention it, it becomes almost the expected norm that press conferences are done daily if not multiple times daily but given how there haven't been many updates on this story given how there's been so such little that we're getting from law enforcement um, you know, perhaps they are only calling a press conference for a major development. So I would say this, if Metro Nashville police call a press conference at this stage, at this point now, now that we're almost two weeks into this, um, it, it's, you would imagine your mind would, would immediately go to this being a significant update, not just a, a routine update. The routine updates have come from, from Twitter. 
a press conference would be a, would be a significant development. And we have not received any word about any press conference happening anytime soon. The family had a press conference yesterday. And really, that's them keeping hope alive that somewhere they get answers. Somehow they get answers. So I want to I want to share that. Let's, let's get this on screen. Let's bring this in from Fox Nashville. Where is Riley Strain? The sheriff's office says that crews are burping, quote unquote, burping the river at the Cheatham Dam, a basic shutdown of the waterway, which allows anything near the river to float to the top. So I'd never heard of that term, burping the river. Um, the idea that if you shut down the waterway and limit the amount of water in that area, you're allowing things, debris, and, and anything else to float up to the top. This is all based on the assumption that Riley is deceased and ended up in the river and then floated or the or the rivers the, the waterway itself took Riley all the way to the dam. The dam is not close to Nashville, folks. Not close. It's a long way. Now, I would need an expert on stream to describe the likelihood that if Riley, if something terrible had happened to Riley, whether intentional or unintentional, and he ended up in the river, what is the likelihood that he could make it all the way to the dam in 12 days time? There are so many factors that come into play. Current um, being, being one of them, uh, the condition of the remains be, being another also has to be stated, but wildlife, if, if, um, if it's human remains, look, it, it's a grim topic, but um, there's going to be a wildlife component to it as well. And, and so, um, and, all, and, and, and for the, again, grim topic, so, so uh, viewer discretion is, is advised, but depending on the condition of the remains, um, how likely is it the remains would end up intact at the dam itself, uh, there's a lot of different places. You can clearly see, even on with these bridges, a lot of different places where something could get caught, especially with um, with someone being, you know, if, if Riley was still fully clothed at the time of, of submersion, uh, you're talking about his clothes potentially getting caught on anything on the bottom of the river surface or on something in the way like the pillar of a bridge. There's a lot of different obstacles between him getting from downtown Nashville all the way again, all the way. What's the distance? The distance is, is immense. Um, bring it up here on Google Maps. Damn. And from It's 30 miles, minimum 30 miles. That is a long, think about that for a moment. Long way from point A to point B. So I'm curious for this basic shutdown at the dam, if local officials were more hopeful that they were going to find a sign of Riley rather than Riley himself. Any other item or a garment of clothing or anything else that might have washed up that at least tells them that Riley did in fact make it to the river, but yeah, so burping the river. I had not heard of that term. That's new. Um, let's see.
Chana says, hey, JB, there's been a lot of us who live here in, in Cheatham County that have been out on foot and in boats searching for a couple of days, sending so much love and prayers to Riley and his family. That's, that's yeah, I, I, I hadn't seen any, any video or heard of any reports of anybody, you know, in the area of, of the dam, um, Shauna, that, that had been actually, you know, searching. Um, but that's that's of, of course it speaks to the people of of Tennessee who are who are just trying to help. I mean that, that that's extraordinary. Um, yeah, you just want to help this family and provide them with um, with some answers. Uh, hearing about how close Riley was uh, w w with his with his mom. I mean, talking multiple times a day, you know, as a 22 year old college student, you hear so often about college students that, um, you know, are, are enjoying their independence and and, uh, and and don't call their parents and don't call home as much as they should. You're, you're hearing about Riley, who was in constant contact with his mom. And that's why his mom knew that something wasn't right pretty early on in the story, because the, the contact just ended. I mean, everything went cold very fast. Emily's la Emily's here with us in the comment section. Hey, Emily, hope you're good. Uh, it is the volunteer state for a reason. Glad to, to see your coverage. Yeah, hat tip to you, Emily. Good to see you in the comment section. Um, yeah, look, I. I I've known a couple of people, including you, Emily, from uh, from from the state of Tennessee, and um, just uh, just some some phenomenal people. Um, and so I, I I know that people are, are doing everything that they can to to help. Um, but this is a story where, my goodness, um, you know, you you just you just hope that we get answers sooner rather than later. The more that this drags on, the more that this is just an incredible heartache for this family and for all, all of his friends. And, and think, of, think too, I mean, my goodness, there's also the, all the fraternity brothers that, that went with Riley on this trip for this convention in, Nash, in Nashville. And um, just thinking about all the people that the story affects. Deborah. Are these boats searching using sonar for underwater? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm trying to find out exactly, you know, look, how much sonar is there? Will there be a grid search? How strategic will sonar be? Because, or will the sonar search be? Because sonar is a tool, but without the right strategy. And I know because I've talked to rescue officials in the past, you have to use, you have to deploy sonar with, with a strategy in mind and, and doing it um, and, and making sure that you are, and that becomes exponentially harder by the way at night. Um, visibility is, is, is low and, um, and just making sure that these teams are communicating, but how many teams are in there? Are, are there? How many sonar boats are gonna be in the water tonight? Um, how much ground can they cover per hour? These are major questions because, again, the river's massive. It's big. And so you, you have a couple of obvious starting points, really starting with where near the, the location of the discovery of the, uh, of the bank card. But it, it, it's been 12 days. So... Let's go back to um, some video from the dam to show everybody. We were talking about the, the burping technique. And here you can see some crews at the top of the dam. This is from WKRN, our sister station in, in Nashville. And then they you know, tilt down and they show. And it's hard to see just how shallow things are here, but <laughs> you would imagine that that's shallow enough to get all of that debris within, you know, so that you can, you can actually see it all. But 
So far, uh, no luck. So far, no results. Uh, Town Crier on, on Twitter. I see that. Thank you. Yeah, and, and this is what we're seeing a lot of now. You know, various reports that are coming out, like this one, just saying, like, nothing turned up. You have to wonder how much hope there was that that something would be discovered today. I mean, you're, you're talking about 30 miles of river and, and the odds that human remains would have traveled from the river in Nashville all the way up to Ashland City, hour away, an hour drive out of the city. I mean... Was it a needle in a haystack? Was it was it a Hail Mary? I only only officials could say. And and really, because we don't have that access with um with law enforcement, there hasn't been that press conference, that massive press conference where these types of questions can be asked. I know that there's been some availability, but it's been it hasn't been as consistent as some other stories that we cover in, in missing, per, missing persons cases when you're getting multiple updates, multiple press conferences, I should say, rather per week. I, I think that Metro Nashville Police, has, they've done a really good job of updating their Twitter account, no doubt. Um, but sometimes reporters and, and the public at large just wants to be able to at, you know, ask a follow-up question to get a better idea as to what the search efforts really look like. Isha says, having worked uh, search and recovery before, it generally takes two to three days for remains in water to come to the surface to be found. Well, it's, it, it, has been, it has been almost two weeks now. Now, I would, I would, I would imagine that search efforts at the dam didn't just start today. That, of course, keeping an eye on the dam itself being such a pivotal point on the river that you would imagine that that teams have had, were, were canvassing the river at, at the dam itself way, way before today. What makes today unique is the basic shutdown, shutdown this, this burping that took place, if you will, to basically... Uh, eliminate as much water as possible, bring as much debris to the surface, and look for any signs of Riley. <clears throat> Again, got to use hashtag HAB for, for me to put your comment on screen, or you can go to www.hjb.live. If you do that way, that means that the comment kind of stays on my screen here to the left rather than just scrolls up and into because your, your comments are coming into the stream center here quite fast so really the only two ways that i can see your comment are, are with that hashtag or, or with um or by going to that website and submitting a comment there I used to autograph Hello from Elmira, New York. I used to live in Elmira, New York. Way back when. Michelle, that's a really good question. Um, I misclicked. See, they're coming in so fast. I'm, I'm, here we go. Hey, JB, I hate to ask this, but at what point does a case go cold? I hope that won't be the case, but I'm not familiar and curious. So, this, you know, 
Michelle, I think you were on our our live stream earlier and we were talking about, you know, public relations strategies. And how scaling back a search is a very sensitive subject, extremely sensitive. You're, you are, um, when you are downscaling a search, it, it sends a message. And um, I would say more times than not, when the search effort for a missing individual is scaled back, you do hear about it from the law enforcement agency in charge. However, uh, tell you from covering a lot of missing persons cases, that doesn't always happen. That there will be a very slight tapering down of, of search efforts because, uh, look, it has to be stated, searches are expensive. Overtime hours for officers and deputies and investigators working around the clock, it's extremely expensive. And at some point, the question is when that point is, but at some point, things need to be scaled down to a more reasonable and sustainable level. Now, I don't know if we're there yet with this story. And really, it's hard to determine exactly whether or not we would be told that. Would Nashville police or would the county sheriff's office say that they are scaling back search efforts? You do see that quite a bit, but in this case, it, it's hard to say if they, if they would acknowledge that the, the manpower, the number of, the level of resources are, are lessened. You know, I was wondering this, Denise, is it, do you, <laughs> is it known if there's gators or other threats swimming in this river? That's, that's you know, a great question. What kind of wildlife is there in the Cumberland River? Find out. A little, little homework. So here we have, make sure that this is, and by, hold on, I got to just verify that the information that I am reading you is from a reputable source. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so this is CumberlandRiverBasin.org, and they talk about the wildlife that is common to the Cumberland River. And, oh my God, it's a very comprehensive listing. And so far, okay, so I'm just going to shout out some of the river wildlife, because I could... I could be, there's coyotes and deer and elk, fox, a lot of birds, but let's just focus on, I'm going to re, I'm going to shout out some of the, uh, the river wildlife, beaver, American beaver, North American river otter. Obviously we are looking for what, what's going to jump off the page as if, you know, if what kind of you know, predators or anything that would go after human remains. Um, tons of exotic birds here too. Bats, bald eagle. Okay, eastern copperhead snakes, a lot of snakes, timber rattlesnake, northern water snake, gray rat snake. Um, okay, so here we have now some more river wildlife. We have the alligator snapping turtle, common box turtle. Different species of fish. So if you were asking about gators, according to Cumberland River Basin, there are no gators up that way. We, of course, are so used to gators in the south. Um, commonplace in Florida. Also commonplace in, in Georgia as well. Alabama. Um, but not as far north as Tennessee, at least according to <laughs> Cumberland River Basin's website. 
which catalogs um, some of the marine wildlife and other wildlife in that, in that region of the country. I have seen some drone video. I don't know if it's law enforcement drone video. I know that they've had helicopters in the air. I would imagine the drones are so commonplace now. The drones, drones used to be considered to be a specialty thing. Um, but every law enforcement agency on the, on the planet pretty much now, or at least in every major municipality and even non-major municipalities across the country, drones, drones are there. Drones are, drones are part of the arsenal that can be deployed uh, with a law enforcement agency, whether it's a standoff situation, uh, whether it is uh, search efforts, um, whether they are uh, trying to navigate particularly particularly dangerous terrain. Um, no doubt drones are part of this. And I've even seen some non-law enforcement drones in, you know, in the air taking video because um, that video has been, of course, published online. Elisa says, do you think we're going to get any more footage from the cameras around the area? I would be surprised. We have got to the point now where um, you would imagine that just about every camera in that area has been thoroughly examined and canvassed. I, I just, I was, I was surprised the body camera video from the officer came out as late as it did. And that that wasn't discovered sooner, even though that really doesn't tell us too much. I don't know. So F says, hey, JB, do you think the where is he going question should have been brought up by that cop since the cop knew he was walking into pitch darkness and there was a homeless encampment there? I, I, no, not really. No, I, I, I don't. It's um, an officer is going to stop every single pedestrian and say, where are you going? Even even if it's in a, you know, an area that is darker than other sections of town, even if there's a homeless encampment nearby. I, I've been to a lot of cities that have a lot of homeless encampments. There are some cities have them all over the place. And so if every officer, or every deputy asked every person walking in a dark area or slightly dark area that happened to be near a homeless encampment, where are you going? There'd be a lot of, a lot of officers stopping a whole lot of random people. It, it's, it's just the truth. So I, I was not surprised by the video at all. The only thing that surprised me about the video that it even existed to begin with because it was just so random circumstance for Riley to cross paths with, with an officer who was at that particular spot who happened to have, of course, a functional body camera um, working. And I really want to take a moment to shout out the great team at WKRN. They're working around the clock right now. Shout out to Sebastian Posey and, and his team. Um, I, I know, I know um, a little bit of, of the operation there in, in Nashville. And, um, and, and they're, they're working really, really hard uh, to just present information as it happens and document the search as it's transpiring. So, um, follow WKRN on, on social. You can follow their web articles as well as they post information too.
Um, <laughs> Adam Nicholson, how many days was Riley missing before the card was found? Uh, when did the when was the card found? What day was that, guys? Was that a week later? Why do I feel like it was a week later? There have been various updates. It was Sunday. I'm sorry, not Friday. Sunday. So, Adam, the card was discovered. Actually, it was by a group that had had um, that was doing work on TikTok, and then came across the card. I mean, absolute needle in a haystack type of discovery. Extraordinary, and goes to show that that volunteers can really help. Volunteers can really assist. Um, I, that was that was an absolutely mind-boggling find, and um, and that was this past Sunday, the seventeenth. So, wonder how much the river dropped in, in that amount of time. Yeah, we need a river expert. To really talk about you know the the level of the Cumberland River. Uh, no. The, the video here on your screen, folks, is not live. Just letting you know. All right, so here's what we are going to do, folks. Let me, let me paint a picture for you as to what this is going to look like. The search right now is active, and even though unsuccessful so far at the Cheatham Dam, um, the Cajun Navy is searching. Metro Police are uh, continue their search. Local County Sheriff's Office continue their search. As we have noted here multiple times on stream, both in Nashville and up near the dam, volunteers are looking as as well. We I'm going to step away, give my vocal cords a little bit of a break. Um, we're going to leave the stream up to allow people to continue to comment along. And what I will do is I will pop back on if there's any significant updates. So I'm going to be monitoring uh, for any updates that we have uh, from our teams in, in Nashville. If anything pops up, we pop back onto the live stream. And that way that we don't have to start a brand new live stream, we can just leave this live stream up. And also, too, that you guys can continue to chat back and forth here in the comment section to our YouTube moderators, Michelle and team. Uh, feel free to continue to moderate comments or chat back and forth with people here. So basically, we'll leave the chat open and allow you guys to uh, sort of an easy access spot in the event that there is significant news or there is a significant update that that surfaces with the Riley strain search. So. Uh, the Stream Center will stay live. I will be stepping away from the microphone for, for a little while, but we'll be on standby to pop back on immediately if there's any significant updates. So thanks so much for watching here uh, from the Stream Center. And again, updates as they come in on WFLA.com and our sister station, WKRN.com.
Hello again, folks. JB here with you in the Stream Center. Uh, we have some live feeds popping up. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to take you to those live locations, again, connected to the Riley Strain story. So uh, for those of you still with us here on YouTube Live or perhaps with us on WFLA.com, the WFLA app, uh, we'll try to get you those live feeds uh, momentarily uh, once the reporters that are providing those pathways are actually ready for those feeds to be taken. So stand by for uh, some live feeds to be popping up here uh, momentarily in the Stream Center. Send it back to you in the studio. Thanks. That was it. Hope everything's all right. Now.
Mark, the hope is that posters like these with Riley's face and information placed all around the city will draw more attention to this case and hopefully lead to new information that might lead to finding Riley Strain. Now, this is about just two, one of 200 of these posters placed around town by Jennifer Ward. Ward has become fast friends with the Strain family since this case started. She saw it on Facebook the day after Riley went missing. Ward realized Riley's family had no connection to Nashville and offered them a place to stay and food if they needed it. Now, in addition to spending hours every day right here searching for Riley, she She's been putting up flyers all day today with her friends, hoping for somebody just to call the number there and give them a little piece of information, just a little nugget as to what they might as to where Riley may be. She says that she's been spending so much of the past two weeks imagining if her 22 year old son was in this position. Ward says that one of the things that would be beneficial is not just filming this area, putting it on your social media page, but actually searching, spreading posters around town and also trying to bring more awareness to this case. Reporting live in downtown Nashville, Adam Mincer, News 2.
Hello folks, JB here with you back in the Stream Center. So a couple of notes uh, to make, some things that have occurred in the last uh, 20 minutes or so. And I want to go to Twitter uh, for our friend and colleague uh, from News Nation, Evan Lampert. Uh, he's been working this story and he says the Cheatham County Sheriff Tim Binkley says that we did not find a body at the Cheatham Dam. He says that they are done for the day, but our affiliate WKRN, as we've been mentioning here on stream, reporting that they are still sifting through the debris this afternoon in the search for Riley Strain. So that is the update. A uh, a body has not been found at uh, really at the Cheatham Dam, according to Sheriff Tim Binkley uh, through News Nation's Evan uh, Lambert. Uh, they appear to be done for the day. Um, now sifting through the debris. Now sifting through the debris to me is important in this sense, in that at, at this stage, finding you know the remains of of Riley Strain just sitting there at the base of the Cheatham Dam it sounds like an extremely remote possibility. But clues, any items, something as small as a it could be uh, something like a like a ripped piece of clothing or a shoe or anything that is that that tangibly could make it from the river in downtown Nashville down to the dam itself. Something that could travel that distance, thirty or so miles. That is uh, potentially could be perhaps in the debris and and could require uh, you know a, a much more significant amount. Of, of, of searching through that debris and sifting through it. So um, updates to follow as those updates come in. Uh, this is the most uh, recent uh, update on this story. I, I encourage folks to follow WKRN uh, for updates and, uh, and, and also too, Evan Lambert is, uh, is working this story as well. Evan has, of course, um, been with us on stream in, in the past does a phenomenal job for News Nation. And so spotlighting some of the local reporters and, and national reporters that are doing uh, a lot of a lot of diligent work here on the search for Riley Strain. Uh, any questions really quickly? You can punch them in, hashtag AJB. I'll look for them in the comment section. Anything that I can uh, point out, anything that I have missed, I, I can't be everywhere on every corner of the internet all at once. So anybody else want to point something out to me, you can tweet at me. Uh, you can also just hashtag KJB really anywhere on social, particularly here on YouTube Live, and I'll be able to, to grab that. In fact, let's go to Evan's page. Nothing new there. Let's see. What time is sundown in Nashville? Let's find that out. <laughs> Seven o'clock. Central. So that means... Uh, eight o'clock Eastern. That means two and a half hours from now. So about two and a half hours of daylight, but really that final hour is going to be really limited. Uh, let's listen here to this live report from WKRN. Looking for anything unusual. In addition, the TWRA says they have seen some volunteers trying to help with the search on the water. They're working to keep those people safe and out of the way of law enforcement. One of the officers out searching today was Lieutenant Eric Anderson. He tells me for him, this is a case he's especially passionate about. Reporter tossing to a soundbite here. Uh, again, just getting into the local pathway of this reporter for WKRN. This is live from Nashville, Tennessee.
Now, Metro Police says they are welcoming volunteers. However, they want to make sure that you are staying safe. So if you do want to come out here, they ask that you do so with the Cajun Navy. Reporting live from downtown Nashville, I'm Nikki McGee at News 2. News 2 being WKRN. Again, follow WKRN.com for, for updates. They're the local next star station that is reporting on this story. I believe now a second reporter is standing by for a, a live report. I believe that she's with the Cajun Navy. Uh, we'll listen into her live report here momentarily. Saying hello to Harry, Nadia, Minnie, Truth and Justice, Jasmine, Butter, Goofy, Sue, Sue, R. Maria, uh, some others in, in, in our comment section. Hello and, and welcome in to the chat. I uh, hope everyone's having a good day out there and, and fingers crossed with some fingers crossed for some news. Any updates that we can get uh, on this story. Let's listen in now for uh, the live report from uh, the second reporter in WKRN's newscast. Yeah, Mark, as you just mentioned, we are out with the Cheatham County Sheriff's Office. We are a good 33 miles downstream from where we know crews are also extensively searching in downtown Nashville. Now, we're actually heading to the Cheatham Lock and Dam. This is where crews earlier today shut down that facility where they were searching through debris. This, when they closed that down, it allowed for any debris, anything down along the river to resurface. Now, as for this Cheatham County crew, they just got out here a few minutes ago. They plan to be out here for another two to three hours, but really we're just slowly scanning along the embankment, idling along here, searching for really just any clues, anything they can find of Riley. Now, they do tell me they do plan to be out here again early tomorrow morning, uh, continuing these search efforts. But for Mark, I will send it back to you in the studio. Again, just tapping into some of the live feeds there. I, I, is this, I think this is going to be an... Oh. Wait. <coughs> Excuse me. We, I thought we were going to have an interview clip there, but we don't. So... Folks, we're going to be wrapping up our streaming coverage here and closing down uh, the live stream across all platforms. If there is any update on this story, we'll let you know about it on WFLA.com, WKRN.com, on social media. You can follow me at WFLAJB. We'll do our very best to keep you posted uh, on this story. Um, obviously, uh, this is now entering what is going to be the 13th day of the search for Riley Strain. Um I just encourage folks to try their very best to keep, um, you know, to to keep as as much hope alive as you can, maintain as much positive energy as as you can. Um, of course, when you're when you're talking about the death of somebody so young, and that thought, of course, enters your mind, uh, the possibility of somebody as young as 22 years old um, losing their life, that uh, can be, of course, of of tremendous stress. And I just encourage folks to. Uh, to try to stay as, as, as positive and as hopeful as, po as can possibly be. Um, updates on this story as they come in. I'll be monitoring it closely, and we will be back on live stream should something occur, uh, especially if there's any breaking news or significant updates that we can share along the way. Thanks so much for joining us here from the Stream Center, and we'll see you next time here from Tampa. Farewell.